In this video, I'm gonna go over the free online GED sample test that's on their website there. I just went ahead and reformatted it just to make it a little easier to see. Now this first question is asking, what is the rental cost per hour? And we paid this amount and we rented it from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. However, anytime you see the word per in math, it always means divide. So we're just gonna take the rental cost that Divide it by how many hours we had it. And from 9 a.m. up to noon, that's three hours, plus four more. So we rented it for seven. So we'll divide by seven here. Okay, let's do it. 28.84 divided by seven. And 412. So that is the cost per hour there. The next one is a substitution. We're just gonna change these letters here and here to these numbers. We're gonna replace x with three, y with negative six. However, when you replace letters with numbers, it'll always work if you put them in parentheses. And we'll go ahead and type this into the calculator here. 36 parentheses three, and then minus, and then we've got eight parentheses negative six. When you use negative, it's that white button down there close it up. But notice this one is squared to the power two. So you could use that x squared. Whoa, that x squared button right there. There we go. And negative 180. So that's it. It's just getting used to how to type that into the calculator. For this one, we're going to convert the story into one of these inequalities here. Now Annie's planning a business meeting. She has a budget for 1325. Let's highlight that part because we have to stay below that amount. In other words, less than that. And this is the symbol for less than. It kind of looks like an L, so that's how you could remember it that way. But it could be B, could be D. The other ones are more than and more than, so we'll get rid of those. From here, we just want to find, do we want to multiply 26 times X or 270 times X? However, the cost of renting the room is 270, we're only gonna pay that one time, so it's gonna be plus 270, just like that. And if we look carefully, we've got 26 people, but X is the amount we're gonna spend on lunch per person, so it makes sense we're gonna multiply 26 times X, just like that. B's got the whole story, so that's it there. For this problem, Dominic earns 285 per week, plus 8% of all of his sales. Now we're gonna break that down, so let's just ignore that first part for a minute because he's gonna earn 8% of his sales and this is the total amount of sales. When you're dealing with a percent, you could always draw this triangle and you'll always know two out of these three things. In our case, we know the percent is eight and we know the total or the whole is that amount. However, we're looking for what part he got out of that, or the top part there. And when they're next to each other, you're going to go ahead and multiply. If they were stacked, then we would have divided. But okay, let's go ahead and do this with the calculator. Now we'll do 4213, and then multiply by 8%. But that's this button right here. If you use the green one, left parenthesis, bada boom. 337.04. However, that's the amount he made just from sales. So we'll go ahead and now add in back that 285 right there, plus that. And his grand total, 6.22.04 cents. So D is his true earnings for the week there. This one looks a bit complex, but it's really just asking us to plot some points. And we're gonna do that for year three and for year 11. We'll highlight those. But no problem, because we go to year three, so we go to the right three, and then we're gonna go up to 12. So up 12, and boom, right there. Just click it, and that's it. Then for year 11, we're gonna go to 14.4. So we'll go up to 14, and then 0.4, it's about halfway, so somewhere about there is going to be good. And that's it for that problem. We just plotted those points on the coordinate grid there. Here we're going to find the volume for this cone, this drinking cup. 
In order to find volume, we could use the formula sheet they give you, and we'll look up the shape. They tell us it's a cone. From here, we already know h is the height, and that's just going to be 4, but we don't know the radius yet. Because they've given us the diameter all the way across, we're going to have to divide it by 2, or cut it in half to get the radius there. No problem, we could actually type this into the calculator if you do second. Let's clear first. We'll do second, then the fraction. And notice we have 2 and 3 fourths. 3 down 4. We want half of this, so we're going to divide it by 2. And from there, it's 11 over 8, but you could use the button above enter, convert it to a decimal. So this is the radius here. Let's copy that down. Okay, but we actually know everything to plug in here, so now we'll go ahead and do the whole thing. It'll start with a fraction, a one-third. Then we got our pi. They're next to each other, so it's times the radius, which is 1.375. And that one's squared, so we'll hit the x squared. Times the height, 4. 7.9. So the volume, 7.9, that's it. For this problem, we want to find when the level of ibuprofen in the patient's bloodstream is increasing. But that's not bad, because that's just when the graph's going up from here to here. We just need to find during what hours that happens. But right away, at hour zero, that's when it starts increasing. So it is going to start increasing right at zero, boom. However, it keeps increasing up until less than hour one. So it only increases for less than an hour. Which of these is less than one hour? It's got to be two-thirds. That's the only thing less than one. So those are the two values, and that's it. This is a long way of saying, how can we convert this expression over here to one of these? But an expression is always something just with a plus or minus between it. In other words, it can only be B or C, because the first and the last thing, those are not expressions, those are inequalities, when you have a less than or greater than. So it actually can't be A, and it can't be D. But they also don't mention anything about parentheses, because then they would use the word quantity usually, so it's going to be C. Let's see why exactly. When you have 27 less than, it's always minus 27 at the end. And then 6 times the number of steps. Steps is s. So it's 6 times s, and then minus 27 there. So it's got all. The key here is we're going to complete a linear equation. That's always something in this form. y equals mx plus b. And right away, we're going to drag these values in. But we know this has to be x, so we'll go ahead and put that there. m is how much we increase each year. And then b is the initial diameter or the initial value. But let's look at m here, because from here to here, we end up bumping up by 0 0.6. You could just subtract that minus that to find that out. But that does take two years to do. So how much did we increase each year? Well, it'd be half of that, so it'd be 0 0.3. And that would get us from 0 0.6 to 0 0.9 to then 0 0.2. So it all makes sense here. But in other words, we definitely increased by 0 0.3 each year. So that is M right there. B is actually what happens at year 0. But that's no problem. We could just go back one step, subtract 0 0.3. That'll land us at 18.3. And that's the whole equation, so we're done. Just as a side note, if you clear and type this into the table they give you, you could do it in y equals 0 0.3, the x is right there, then plus 18.3. It's actually going to recreate the table that they gave us. So if we go back to the beginning here, year 0, 18.3, that's what we said and then year 1, 18.6, and so on. So it matches perfectly. And you made it. This is the last one here. We're going to find out how much wrap it takes to cover this tree here. 
we're interested in year 13, so let's highlight that. And we're given at year 13, the diameter all the way across 22.2. Now we're interested in the wrap, the area of it. In other words, it's gonna be the surface area. And we know this is a cylinder because it kind of looks like a Red Bull can. So anything that's a can shape is gonna be a cylinder. Except ours doesn't have a top or a bottom. No problem, that first part represents the sides, that second part is actually adding one for the top, one for the bottom for a grand total of two circles. But we don't want those circles, let's get rid of it, and we're just gonna plug in to this part. At this stage, we do know H, that's the height, 45 inches. The radius, we're gonna use this data, but that's the diameter, so you'll always divide the diameter by two, that divided by two, we'll get 11.1. Now we're ready to plug it in here. Let's clear. Let's do two pi times our radius, 11.1, times our height, 45. And 3138, 45, let's copy that down. Now at this stage, we're super close, but obviously it's not one of the answers because this is how many square inches we have but we need to convert it to square feet. And you can do this visually because one foot by one foot is one square foot. But it's the same thing as 12 inches times 12 inches. Multiplying those, we get 144. So therefore, we wanna find out how many of these or how many square feet go into this. So we'll divide that by 144. Okay, so let's do divided by 144. Final answer, 21.79, closest, A, and that's it. So let me know what questions and issues you run into. Good luck, you got these. We'll see you in the next video. Toodles.